What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Frag by Thor Open. I am here with Shredkid, and we are here to bring you all of the qualifying matches that we can possibly cast, and we will have the finals of the qualifying matches tomorrow. But this will be going on for the next eight weeks or so, and then the land qualifiers will be in Stockholm, Sweden. So I'm really excited about this game. We have Fnatic versus Sen. Are you hyped? I'm super hyped. I haven't actually seen Fnatic play after, you know, a lot of hype, a lot of press surrounding these guys. So I know the players, I'm familiar with them, and I really want to see what they're capable of working together. So I'm ready to go. And I don't know this other team, Sen, but I was looking at their Steam profiles. I think they're Russian, but if I'm horribly mistaken, I'm sorry. I'm not familiar with any of these players, so. Yeah, this is an open, inter open tournament, so that means you too could sign up and get a chance to win, especially if you're in the European scene. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper to get into the transit, but this is an open qualifier. After eight weeks, the winners of each of the finals played every Saturday. will qualify for the land finals in Stockholm, Sweden. Brought to you by Fragbyte. This is the Fragbyte Thor Open. So, shout outs to all of the Fragbyte sponsorship. Really happy to see open tournaments like this to get other teams. We want the next pot and bottom. We want the next We Has Asians. We want to get more hype into the Dota 2 scene, so let's go. Absolutely. I'm a huge fan of small tournaments like this. It's it, They're really just such a great way for getting teams who have got the talent, they got the skill, and they have the drive who are just ready to go and put themselves in the competitive scene, and that's how they launch themselves into it. So you can see teams coming out of nowhere in these things, and it's it's really exciting to see the Dark Horse just come and, and win from nowhere. So judging by this Treant ban, I'm guessing that we're on 6.75. Right? I guess so. Uh, this is tournament patch, so I guess it's only Magnus who's not ported in. So we're going to see some entirely new picks. So I am actually really, really excited for this. We're going to see hopefully a lot more aggression. And I'm really looking forward to this. I can't say how excited I am enough. Uh, absolutely. So my, my entire band pick analysis has completely gone out the window because in the last patch, it was very formulaic to a point. You could pretty much always tell what people were going to do. In this patch, there isn't a set pattern yet. Nobody, nobody has a, a drafting method down yet so it's very much up in the air and with the two bands instead of three at the beginning we're going to see some more overpowered heroes in the pool which means more creative counter picks so i think we're going to see a whole new range of heroes this match yeah this is actually probably the first tournament along with what is the other twin oh the eswc qualifiers that are going on right now of course the premier league other tournaments like that ghost league division one a lot of tournaments but this is the off day i think this is probably one of the first official matches with the new patch and so the Supposedly, quote unquote, mm -hmm. imbalanced heroes, according to many people's opinions, are Triant, Darkseer, and Rubik still is quite broken, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see a Rubik ban. But we're going to see a Naga ban instead. Naga ban makes a little more sense, I think. Most teams, at least if they have the first pick, because it forces the other team to ban uh, the Rubik for them. But they didn't, they banned Lycan, which is. I guess they're still scared of Lycan. Maybe they don't know it's the same patch. I don't know. Maybe they think he's really strong, but yeah, just like. I thought that might happen. We're going to see Rubik first pick. And even though this hero is a very good hero in his own right, what makes him so, so good as a first pick is because for the next five picks that Sen has, they cannot pick something that will be stolen by Rubik. And this means probably Pandas, it means Enigma, it means Tidehunter. It means they have to design their entire lineup around this one hero. Yeah, really good research by Fnatic, keeping in, keeping up to date with the patch, keeping up to date with the turn mode. They clearly have done their research. Banging out Treant, Naga, Sion, who got some nerfs, but not really the most powerful nerfs. Uh, Lycanthrope is a bit of an odd band, considering you can't jungle nearly as easily. But already, we're going to see a first pick of Tidehunter. This is pretty odd, considering the Ravage speed has actually been decreased quite significantly. So it's actually easier for Rubik to steal Ravage. What do you think about this pick? Um... Yeah, the first thing I saw when I saw the Tidehunter Ravage speed change was it's going to be so much easier for Rubik to steal it. It's the first thing that came to mind. So what a lot of teams really like doing, if, if you have a Rubik and the other team has a Tidehunter, they'll take, I bet you they take Enigma right here. And if they don't, then I'm completely wrong. Okay, TA, that makes a ton of sense too. What the Enigma does is he BKB rushes and reacts to the Tidehunter Ravage, black holes him, and then Rubik steals it. But... Templar Assassin is a hero right now that's so strong, and even, especially if you have a good TA player, it's you get out of control so fast. Like you're probably gonna win your lane, and then you're gonna run around killing everybody, and that's how she kind of works. So, Fnatic's lineup looks real strong right now, and I'm wondering how Sun's gonna respond. Yeah, right now we're not seeing anything too out of the ordinary, but keep in mind that we'll see a lot more counter picking in the end of the stages as people start to ban on more uh, mid game carries or whatever comes into the play. Maybe. We're going to see different supports. It could be anything. But Morphic is also an interesting pick. He got nerfed quite hard, which I know you're glad about personally, but 
Uh, Morphling, I think, I'm not really too sure if Sen has really studied the balance changes too much, or maybe they're just going with what they know. Probably the latter. They want to play on their A game against a team like Fnatic, but still, uh, they're a little bit stuck in their trends. But considering the patch has only been out one day, you can't really blame them. Okay, the Veno, the Veno makes a ton of sense. In this pick, they had to pick up either, they had two options, Batrider or Venomancer. And most teams aren't running Batrider yet. I think they will, but Venomancer is just a safer pick. And because they picked up a support now, they have their tri lane in place, unless they want a Morphling solo mid or tight off lane. But that's probably going to be their tri lane. So we'll see where they go from here. I'm expecting from Fnatic a ban out of, I'm thinking, Windrunner is probably the best ban that they can get rid of. Yeah, right now, this is going to be a little bit odd because we had not really seen what the next three bans are, so this will really come down to the teams and with an unknown quantity like Sen, and I honestly have not studied Fnatic too closely, so I can't honestly say what their trends for picking and banning are. But a lot of counterpicking, counterbanning will go on in the last phase, and it should be pretty exciting. Hopefully we'll see some new heroes, maybe something like a Spirit Breaker, maybe something like a Batrider. Probably not going to see Batrider because he would have been picked up against a Templar Assassin. But we are going to see a Chen, and this still makes a lot of sense. A very, very strong hero in his own right. Not as powerful in terms of saving his own allies, but still a very strong timing pusher. And if they manage to pick him up, then Venomancer, Chen, Morphling is a very potent lineup. Here's what comes to mind with that Chen ban. Like you said, he's got that that just such strong pushing at around from the 10 to say 25 minute mark, right? But he has nothing for Rubik to steal. If if he if he plays his cards right, he will not give away his his ultimate, which is the biggest thing. And everything else is just kind of mad with Rubik. Doesn't really offer him anything. So basically, they're getting rid of a hero who won't be necessarily amazing against them, but won't be amazing for them either. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it makes some sense. Uh, it's still a little bit odd, to say the least. But yeah, Chen, of course. I mean, if you steal Hand of God, so it's 200 teal against the Venomancer, that still makes a different, big difference. But most Chen players will just cast Hand of God and then immediate spell after that. So yeah, it might be a counter pick against, or a safety ban against the Rubik. We'll see in the soon. Absolutely. And the Syllabar, that also makes sense. Radiance is just one of the best ways to chew through Refraction. If you don't have a Radiance, can't get through the Refraction. At least unless you have multiple dots on the field. Right now they only have one. Morphling is not good against Templar Assassin. Kill him before he is able to escape or morph his way out of something or what have you. But so far they only have Venomancer. And Venomancer is not effective early against Templar Assassin. If you try to gank Templar Assassin mid with a Venomancer, she'll just meld the hit. And it's like you were never even ganked. This is true. And right now, uh, how do you think the lanes are shaping up? You still have a Poen. He could offlane the Tidehunter, but most likely we're probably going to see a Tidehunter support. Venomancer. Uh, Morphling mid is not really as certain as it used to be, considering the base damage nerf, so you have to morph a little bit more in order to get that insanely powerful last hitting. And even then, versus TA, it's still hard to last hit against her. So how do you think they'll lane the Morphling? It's a little bit odd at this point. You can't run Morphling mid anymore. He'll get slammed. Um, especially... The base damage was big, but the other thing is big. Waveform over somebody, you can't attack them while you're doing it. So you can't necessarily, when someone's pushed up on your high ground, you can't waveform them and then attack them. So Morphling cannot mid, which means right now, to me, it looks like Sen has the makings of an aggressive tri lane. They pick up a mid hero and they pick up a safe lane solo. However, it's very flexible. They can dual mid, they can do tied off lane, they can do a 1 1 1 with dual roam. Uh, that would be mostly a defensive tri lane with two roamers. Like, right now, both teams are extremely flexible. The only thing that's probable... Wow, it's you know what? It's not even probable that Templar Assassin's going to go mid. They might put a Rubik mid and have TA safe lane. Okay, Invoker. And this is starting to make sense. Fnatic is just going for as flexible a lineup as they possibly can. Everybody has disables. Everybody deals damage. Their one major weakness is that they're all really, really squishy. However, point one, Rubik's... Uh, null field is going to kind of nullify that a little bit. But point two, they're all going to be mobile. Rubik is always going to build mobility. TA is mobile, Invoker is mobile. So they're going to be hard to nail down. And if you can't nail down squishy heroes, they're so hard to kill. I would love to see an NS pickup right now from Sen. Yeah, NS would actually make a lot of sense. Give them a little bit more aggression. Give them a little bit uh, way to counteract the mobility. Of course, that fear to stop the silence and to stop Invoker from casting spells. And more importantly, it gives them a little bit of mid lane aggression, and here comes there the Batrider pick versus the Templar Assassin. I like this adaptation. Batrider received a whole host of buffs, 
Uh, actually, I played Batrider last night, and I think the biggest difference, not including his strength go again, was not only that the Firefly lasts till after his death, so you can actually blaze a trail, and even if you die, it's still pretty significant, but the casting animation decreased by 0.1 seconds was actually pretty noticeable, and I'm really Very excited to see this pick up against Templar Assassin. Now, I've played Batrider maybe five or six Ten times since the patch. He's... Very short anecdote. He was my favorite hero in Dota 1. He's quickly become it again in Dota 2 now that he's been fixed. I, I've already thought and felt that this hero's tier 2, and this was pre 6.75. I honestly believe that this hero is top tier now in this current patch. I feel like he's unstoppable mid lane. He deals so much damage late game. And people say, oh, he falls off late game. Well, no. If you get a dagger in a BKB, every single fight, you will start it at 4v5 because you BKB a dagger in. Grab a key target, and this one they'll go for maybe Invoker, TA, Rubik, any of them, really. And you kill them instantly, and then you start the fight. So, I don't know. If, they, if they've got a really good bat player, this could work out, but I am biased towards this hero, so. Yeah, me as well. And right now, there is nothing that can go through BKB on the side of Sentinel. Right now, you have the Lasso that goes through BKB on the side of the uh, Sen squad. So... Flaming Lasso, and considering, like you said, the Fnatic squad is still relatively squishy, Firefly will always be rolling until probably the late stages of the game. That damage output is quite huge, and since the buff to 18 seconds, or the buff to 18 seconds, you get 240 more damage, which is not insignificant. And Earthshaker, probably a little bit of a counter pick against Batrider to stop his initiation from a long way, and also to help out the mid lane, so Batrider can't really dive as aggressively. Most likely, you're probably going to see this Earthshaker roam quite a bit and hopefully secure the lanes so Batrider can't really get an advantage. I like this pickup. I very much like this pickup. Here's the deal. What I was thinking, I, I just mentioned the BKB build. If they didn't get the Earthshaker, though, Batrider could have gotten away with doing a, a Blink Dagger 4 staff build, which would have devastated Fnatic. Had he been able to get those items up on time, they wouldn't be able to win. However, Earthshaker makes that impossible, so kind of controls their positioning a little bit better. Shadow Shaman gives him a little bit of much-needed pushing, but right now, I really like Fnatic's lineup just more, even though we got Batrider on send. So let's see who picks who. I'm interested in seeing who's playing what role on Fnatic, because I know I should have been following them more closely, but I haven't been, so... Yeah, and right now it looks like no is going to be playing that Earthshaker. JK is going to be playing that Invoker. Trixie's going to be playing the Templar Assassin. Uh, EK Stiff, I'm not really too sure who that is, is playing the Leshrac. And right now Rubik is probably going to be played by maybe Hani, or I guess maybe Hani is not playing. I'm not too sure, but we'll see very, very shortly. You know, on the Sand Squad, we are going to have Ibis playing the Shadow Shaman, Cubby, or Chubby and Cub143 playing the Batrider, EEE -E -E playing the Tidehunter, Twisted Prepare playing the Morphling, and Winter, or Snake Spites Winter, playing the Venomancer. Absolutely, and right now it looks like immediately we see Fnatic moving and they're trying to secure the enemy jump. It looks like they might aggressive tri lane, which I'm really liking. This is one of the things I thought they might do, do an aggressive tri lane with no true farmer in it, have TA mid and invoker bot solo, but we'll see if this actually happens. And you know what? They are doing it, so... I would have seemed really cool had I actually said this when I was thinking it, but anyway, it's going to be an aggressive tri lane with no real farmer, so it's just going to be focused 100% on killing. I think they'll put the farm on the Leshrac, maybe? Yeah, it could be a possibility, but right now, I'm. it's a little bit odd to see how the Sand Squad is shaping up to be. Right now, it looks like Morphling is going to stay in the middle lane. Up against Templar Assassin, it'll be really difficult, and Batrider... Even before the buff and the changes, he was pretty good versus Templar Assassin, so if Barrier stays on the top lane, I'm not really too big of a fan with this lane setup by the Sand Squad. I don't fully understand. I think right now, though, they're not really in their lanes. They're just trying to establish their jungle, try to get control over it before, you know, the invasion comes in. But they're going to move to lane immediately, so we'll see how this turns out. And, okay, it looks like Batrider begins. might solo top with an aggressive tri lane coming out from... Looks like Tide, Venomancer, and Rasta. Or are they 2-1-2? Two two? I'm not sure. We don't even know yet. There's a lot of map movement going on, so... 
Yep, and looks like the Fnatic squad is gonna find the Shao Shaman right off the bat. They place the pull spot ward so they can't pull. But here comes EE casting the gush on the last track. Can they catch up for the slow? Nice defensive fissure being dropped, but looks like Nota is being blocked in by the fissure. Edict doing a huge amount of damage. Looks like Nota is gonna be the first one to die. Really unfortunate, and the fissure block actually worked against Fnatic. Really unfortunate. And Waveform comes in, cleans up the last track. Huge, huge victory for the Sand Squad, giving them some confidence and giving them some nice momentum. Keep in mind that this is best of one qualifiers up until the finals. So if Fnatic loses, they have to try again in the next qualifiers. So giving them confidence Denied. and giving them some security and Morphin getting some gold. He'll be able to get that Ring of Aquila or whatever item he decides to go for. And it looks like Baron is going to stay in the top lane. Illusion. So we're going to see how these lanes shape up. But right now, I think Fnatic might have a slight advantage. Oh, absolutely. Getting first blood and a second kill like that, it's, it's a very good start. Unfortunately, I think that Fnatic was just a little bit miscoordinating their play up there. They weren't really together how, the way they should have been. I think they were just, maybe it's a little bit sloppiness at the beginning of a tournament, but we'll, we'll see how they shape up because I was surprised that they were spread out like that. That's not something you typically see from an experienced team. And we're actually going to see an Exhort Invoker, so we're going to see the Sunstrikes coming in, but Rubik's already being pushed out of the lane a little bit by a Sticky Napalm. And considering that Shao Sham is so very far back, and they don't really have vision of him, so they don't really know. So Barrett is getting some relative free farm at this point in the game, and if you get Barrett a free farm, he will get a fast blink dagger, and he's already turned on the Ring of Basilius Aura to push the wave a little bit further. A little bit of an odd decision, as now Rurik is going to get some free farm as well. No, it's because it's because Ross is pulling. Yep. And... So it, it'll balance it out. Push, pull, same thing. Anyway, looks like they picked up a rune. No, they were just camp. Rune's going to be bought, but... Yep, right now Morphling already have to use the burn through the salve, and TA has picked up the bottle, so this lane setup is not working out for the Morphling. Like you said, it's very difficult to mid lane Morphling, especially against a Templar Assassin, with all the nerfs to his damage and to his waveform, so it's going to be really, pretty tricky for this Morphling to get a decent amount of free farm as he's going to be continuously harassed. No, he won't be able to burn through the refraction, there's just no way. So. Mid lane's gonna go to Fnatic, unless there's some serious gank. But meanwhile, bot lane, looks like they're just jogging around. It appears that they've adopted a 2-1-2 at this point, so they're gonna kinda pressure bot lane, kinda pressure top lane, but no, not really focus a lot in any one lane. So, again, I'm not gonna say this is good, I'm not gonna say it's bad, it's just interesting that they're trying to spread out the farm instead of concentrating on one person. Yeah, and Batrider, very, very strong. Haze oh, coming out on here. bot lane. Check the gank, so it's going to be a no Fisher coming out from No-Tail. A Haze to Trixie running in. Tidehunter stands no chance. He's taking so much damage. If Trixie chooses to be aggressive, looks like he's going to. Tidehunter's juking around. He's going to salve up. Canceled immediately. Uh, he's going to try to reduce the damage, but no. Trixie's going to kill him, and he's going to be able to get out. No-Tail gets up a second kill on Venomancer, so that's a great gank. Very well coordinated, and two kills coming out in fast succession from Fnatic. Yeah, really nice aggressive maneuver by Trixie. Realizing with the haste rune, he can pretty much get a kill and help out his invoker on the bottom lane. Now invoker will be pretty safe as he is faceless at the moment. No face for the invoker, the faceless invoker. Uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> as meanwhile, Morphling couldn't do too much work there. Has 10 CS, but still not able to do too much. He has picked up a bottle as well. But against Templar Assassin, it's going to be so difficult in order to get proper rune control. And Templar Assassin is already with the kill is having a really, really strong start. Absolutely. She's leading the map in CS, sir. At least she's one behind the Batrider. And she just picked up some kills. This is this is going to be... Oh, Invoker Bird. on the bottom lane. Looks like Tyrant and Venomancer initiate. Can Invoker escape Gush uh, as well as Venom Scale is casted? And a nice ward blocking up, but nice tango through the T trees. And JK should be able to escape another Gush coming in as Cold Snap and Tower Hits doing significant damage to EEE. -E -E. Looks like he's going to juke the Sun Strike barely, and Invoker is going to have to back off for now. So overall, nice aggressive maneuver by both teams. But nothing came of it, and Volker is just going to stay back in the lane, phase boot up, tangle up, and hopefully get back to his full HP relatively soon. Absolutely, and that's what having two points in Quas is going to allow you to do for that. Anyway, looks like Batrider is still being able to farm. He's at 800 gold. I'm guessing he's just straight rushing a Blink Dagger. I, I don't see what else he would do in this situation, but... Yep, Blink Dagger, especially when you're getting a level advantage. Looks like there's going to be a little bit of aggressive maneuvers towards Rubik, but no, Rubik's just going to back up. Shadow Shaman is now staying quite close, knowing that Rubik and Lashak can just kill the Batrider. Even with the strength increased buffs, it's still pretty easy to kill the Batrider, considering he has below average move speed and below average armor. 
Uh, it's not too difficult to bring him down, but right now you can see Invoker and Batrider and Templar Assassin all tied with 20 CS as Batrider takes a slight advantage. So right now Fnatic seems to be in pretty good shape. Absolutely, and I wanted to bring your attention to something. Actually, I'll talk about it later. Some ping is going out on bot lane. Invoker's moving into position. I think that Shaker might try to get a block. Oh, he's just pulling. Thought they were age right there, but they're, they're just trying to make me look silly. Anyway, that rider's skill build is kind of bizarre, for lack of a better word. He's yeah. maxing Firefly over Napalm. I guess this is pretty indica uh, indicative of the fast Blink Dagger rush build, because they're going to do a lot more damage rather than stacking Napalm, so you're just going to jump in and just do a lot of damage to Firefly and not going to be able to stack Napalm. So he's against a dueling, so using that sticky Napalm for lane control is not as suitable as looks like Templar Assassin managed to pick up the kill on the Morphling. Honestly, did not see how that happened, so my bad. But Ibis is going to be placing more. Templar Assassin is just having a magnificent start to this game, and it's going to be really difficult to shut down this Templar Assassin in the mid-game. Templar Assassin is, in my opinion, the best momentum-based hero. She picks up momentum the hardest, and once she started, she's the hardest to stop. So, she's got her phase boots, and she's got a double damage rune. Expect some big play coming out from her. We see a ton of pings coming out on top lane, and Batrider's gonna lasso the Rubik. He hasn't hit his spell yet. He's dropping some napalms. He's only got two on him. Looks like Leshrac's going to be held in place. He's going to go down to the Firefly. Three stacks on Rubik, but it's not slowing him that much, and it looks like Batrider is going to back off for fear of tanking the tower too much. Yep, Batrider managed to pick up a Cloak of Defiance, so he gets a little bit of magic reduction before he goes for that Blink Dagger, so a nice pickup for him. Meanwhile, Invoker is continuing the farm. There's going to be a teleport in. Looks like they want to make something happen on the bottom lane. Earthshaker maneuvering himself into position. Leshrac TPs in as well. Can Leshrac get anything started? No, as looks like Max is going to be Thor for now. Meanwhile, Templar Assassin is just having so much fun in this middle lane. Just having probably the game of his life at this point. Okay, Toby. <laughs> Shout out to Toby. Shout out to Toby. Cast so many games, like you're gonna end up saying the same things, you know, at some point. But it looks like at this point, they're just trying to out or Fnatic. That is, is just trying to out farm the other team, and they're succeeding so far. There's gonna be a smoke gank coming in from ES and Lashrak. Let's watch out for the morph. He will get burst down so fast with this DD. He'll die before he can really morph out of it. So. Well, Morphling still has full mana, but the trap is placed. Can Mine get away? Mine is going to waveform out through the trees, but it looks like he's stuck on the ledge. Really unfortunate. Sunstrike going to reveal him. Can Templar Assassin get any hits? No, Templar Assassin has no range, and they're just going to stand together. <laughs> a little bit of a staff, but Morphling's not receiving any farm. He's going to have to heal up and get back, or he's just probably just going to wave back into the lane, but they have him completely surrounded. Very unfortunate position for the Morphling. He's actually going to waveform in aggressively. Templar Assassin with the DD. Will she be able to get anything started? I Beast. The Shadow Shaman is maneuvering himself into position, but looks like Templar Assassin cannot get anything started. Oh, Endless Juke says Fisher's gonna come in. Ibis is completely trapped. Will they be able to get the kill? Yes, they will get the kill on Shadow Shaman. Can Trixie get away? Refraction just comes off of cooldown. And will he go back in for the Morphling? No, looks like he's gonna be thwarted for now. And looks like there's gonna be a middle tower push with this creep wave. And with the Earthshaker still there, they still want to go after the Morphling, but I don't know if they can get it. They could. They could. If, if TA wanted to be really aggressive, I think that they could have, but they didn't have the information that we have, so they don't know who's behind that tower. Uh -oh. So I think they made the right choice. On the bottom lane, it's gonna get fissured out of mana, completely trapped, is sprung. Looks like Invoker and Templar Assassin are converging. Sunstrike gonna come in. E -E -E is gonna take the fall, as the tower on the bottom lane is gonna be pushed down. Fnatic getting off to a very strong start. Even after losing the first couple kills in the first flood, but no creeps had spawned, and it's not really a huge experience advantage. So Fnatic taking advantage of a little bit of inexperience, but No Tail is getting caught out of position. Another Fissure blocking off a very defensive Fissure. Looks like No Tail is going to be in a bit of trouble as Barra is going to teleport in with a finished Hooded Defiance. He's going to be really tanky, not even going for the Blink Dagger, as he's going to try to chase down the Earthshaker, but Cold Snap going to hold him in place. Then it looks like he's just going to have to back out. Is he trying to pursue? No, he is going to back up. That would have been some aggressive play right there, but I think that they're just being outmaneuvered. Like the kill score and the tower score look fairly even, but it's 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 gonna be hard for. Oh man, I'm so sorry. I forgot the team name for Sand. the dire to get back in the damn game. San. Okay, thank you. Yep, and Volker actually went for Hannah Midas. He was receiving oh, decent free. Yeah, fun. I was gonna say that. <laughs> Hannah Midas. Favorite of North American pubs invokers. They all get Midas on their Jordan Volker. Kind of makes sense, you get levels, you get attack speed, but... 
Looks like four heroes on the Sand Squad are gonna try to group up, get perhaps an engagement going. Invoker pretty low on mana. Rubik's trying to maneuver himself into position, but no, it looks like Sand is gonna back off. Right now, Rain has a little bit of a gold match, but not the biggest in the world. But let's just check out the experience advantage. A bit of a bigger difference for the rating. And that's gonna mean something as Morphog is coming in as well, gonna give up his farm. Not only too sure about this decision, but he is invisible. Well, I think that they are kind of thinking that they have to make something happen if the game just continues in, in the same trend without any engages but there is engaged right now Earthseeker is going to try to shut it down are they going to be aggressive no tail is taking a lot of damage waveform is going to come and finish him off bat rider cold snap he can't catch he could use the missile but he's holding it i think he wants to save it for damage and looks like they're just going to cut the wave and try to take the tower with rubric down however mid tower i believe falls and it's going to get pressured at least in the meantime and I think that this will be the end of the engage, unless there's going to be some TPs to save bot tower. A lot of pings going out, as it'll take a little bit of time to push down this tower, as no wards being dropped, and all five heroes are here, so Fnatic's still getting overall experience advantage. And right now, Leshrac, in conjunction with the Templar Assassin, is going to do a lot of damage to this middle tier 2 tower. Teleport's coming in, but fortunately for Fnatic, the tower is still outside of deny range, so overall putting a lot of damage on the tier 2 tower, in exchange for five heroes pushing down a middle tier 1 tower and a Rubik. It's not the best trade for Fnac, but I think they'll take it for now. Oh, they'll absolutely take it. And here's why they'll take it. Templar Assassin is about 100 gold away from Dagger. If you get the towers down, people can't TP to defend you when you go on them. So when you have a Templar Assassin and they don't have towers, if she sees someone, they die. That's just how it works. So getting these towers down favors Fnatic far more than it favors Dagger. is under attack. Yeah, definitely. As Barrett went for the Herd of Defiance, what do you think about this decision? I don't want to be overly critical because... They game plan that I'm not privy to, but I feel like you need the fast flank dagger and bat. Like, you don't have an option of not getting it. And it looks like they're going to try to make something happen with the smoke dagger, but just before Dyer's that, or smoke gank, excuse attack. me, but Templar Assassin's going to buy her dagger. There we go. Oh, uh, no tail is going to be in a lot of trouble. He's going to die for sure. Hex is going to be casted. They're going to use the lasso as well. Morphling going to wave up, but Batra does get the kill. Fissure is going to be dropped, but it's just going to hold uh, Zen in place for a while. Will they be able to get anything happen? Again, all five heroes committing to that engagement. So Zen, they're trying to get themselves back in the game, but they're sacrificing a lot of experience in the meantime. Now, if, if it continues at this rate, they not only need to kill Fnatic, they need to take their towers also, and they need to capitalize on Roshan. They can't just kill someone and back up. Looks like Leshrac is a little bit out of position, but ES is going to save him. Great Fissure holding him out. Stun's going to hit on multiple people. Uh, Nova's doing a lot of damage. Shaker comes in. Morphling's taking a lot of damage. Leshrac goes down. Two are down. Morphling's going to go down, however. Oh, no. Look at TA. One hit, two hits. Two hits to kill the Ross. The Batrider will fall. Yes, he will. Sunstrike, not even necessary. Four are going to go down. Venomancer lives, and that's all for the price of a TS. Yeah, Tormented Soul took the fall, and that is it. They didn't even get the middle tower. They had Ravage, but unfortunately he was killed before he could use it. Or he went for the engagement, but only Leshrac was near him, so he didn't want to use it for that. They got the Leshrac killed, but Tide Hunter died immediately after. Unfortunate for the for the Tide Hunter. And meanwhile, TA with that Blink Dagger, just able to blink over the Fissure, do so much damage. And TA, like you said, one of the best, if not the best, momentum-based hero, is just having so much fun in this game. No, absolutely. The timing the timing is basically, if you get Blink Dagger before 12 minutes on TA, you're probably going to win the game. It's just how it works. So, we see a smoke gang coming out from Fnatic. It's kind of interesting that they choose to follow an, a, a successful engage with another smoke gang, but I guess they're just trying to drive the nail in the coffin, you know? Get, get them while it's hot, but they can't find Sen right now, as, as hard as they're looking. Yeah, it looks like Sen, they want to get the tower, they have the Ravage as well, but again, always sticking as tier 3. It's good in terms of safety and numbers, but right now they're sacrificing a lot of experience. Leshrac going to come in as well. Fissure trapping Ivy's in place. Uh, split Earth going to be cast out as well. Will Sunstrike strike manage to hit? It looks like it's split up. Leshrac takes the ball once again, but they trade it for Shadow Shaman. It looks like Rubik's going to get the engagement on the Tyrant. Will he cast Ravage? Wait for him coming in by the Rubik as Time Hunter might be the victim of this Fissure and Fable coming in. Nicely done by Fnatic, as it looks like Sen just overextended themselves, and they paid the price as a blink by the Templar Assassin. Will he be able to pick out the Venomancer? Has a double damage, a couple hits. Will be able to pick out the Venomancer, but nice juking by the Venom. Looks like he's going to escape for now. Really nicely done, but will he blink back in? Oh, no tail with the blink in waveform, and Winter is going to be in a lot of trouble. No, a bunch of teleportations. Going to save this slug for another day. Hex gonna Maybe cast not. Out he's gonna turn around and deal a lot of that. 
Oh no, but no, she will TP out. Yep. I got real hopeful there for a second. I thought she was going to go for it. As the middle tower is denied, a bit unfortunate for a Fnatic, as a lot of sentry wards being placed by the Dire in very close proximity against that Templar Assassin. Pretty odd, but I guess not entirely unexpected, as they still want to get the push going on. They still have the Rage, and they have the Lasso. As it looks like <laughs> Sen, they just really want this middle tower. They want to get some map positioning, and hopefully just stall out for their Morphlings. Oh, absolutely. You can't, you can't be an aggressive gank team and have the enemies tier 1 tower up. It doesn't work. So they are going to finally get it. Oh, wow. The Sunstrike just misses on Beast, but I'm pretty sure he's going to oh, die. Templar Assassin taking suicide. so much damage. Damage over time. Refraction and Venomance are doing so much work. Looks like Trix is going to be caught in place. Another Sentry Horde being popped. Ravage finally being used. Looks like No Tail is going to enter tree as well. Templar Assassin buys back. Will Echo Slam being cast before Staff actually being used before? Echo Slam actually did nothing in that engagement. Unfortunate communication by Fnatic, as looks like Fnatic is going to get pushed back for now. Templar Assassin did buy back. Will they make anything happen with this? Leshrac Splurth catches two heroes nicely placed as Fable coming in. And now Templar Assassin is back. She wants vengeance. She's going to go back on a rampage. Going to pick off the Batrider, it looks like, trying to get the trap going as Firefly being casted, but without a blink dagger, Dyer can't really escape. Splurth misses completely. Wow, very unfortunate. But another trap is going to be sprung. Will they pick off? Meanwhile, it looks like JK managed to pick off the Tidehunter, and Barrett is going to take the fall. He's flying all over the place. Oh, he might survive. Wow. I think... Oh, hang on. Oh, JK. Just kidding. Oh, no. He's going to back off again. No, just kidding. Oh, nice hex by the Shadow Shaman. Barrett is going to live. He lives. As Ivy's is going to take a bunch of damage from the Templar Assassin, starting to try falling in. Invoker actually picked off the Barrow, nicely done by JK. A chaotic engagement comes out ultimately in favor of Fnatic, but Sen put up a really strong fight. Got the middle tier 1 tower, but the buyback of the Templar Assassin was just too much. Yeah, TA yeah, is. I, I, I sound like I'm really, really favoring this hero, and it's because when you get the early start off, you are unstoppable. I, I don't think that there's any way assuming a TA is started on the right path to really get her off of it. So even if you kill her, she is going to come back and kill all of you. And you can't run from a TA, especially if you haven't got the towers up for TP support. Yeah, especially when Ravage is on cooldown, a lot of AoE damage missing. And just checking out the last hits, 92 for the Invoker, 68 for the Templar Assassin. Morphling only 48 has nothing, not really going too well for this Morphling player. And they really need him to contribute in this game, but he takes a lot longer to get going. He might have to go for the Lincoln Sphere with the Morph nerf. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's going to do. Right now, I think he's just trying to stay as relevant as he can, and he's not really going for any big items. But it looks like Fnatic's going to try to take down this Tier 1 tower top. Not entirely sure, but they, they were moving into position, but I think that they know something's up. I think that they know that Sen is going to smoke gank them, so... Yes, nice map awareness by Fnatic as Smoke Tank is going to be thwarted again, losing a lot of experience as we're just going to check out the experience graph. Oh man, it's going over 7,500. At this stage in the game, that is extremely significant. Especially with squishy heroes like Shao Shao and Venomancer, they're just going to die in a heartbeat. Oh, absolutely. And if we take a look at some of the big carries on Fnatic, we got about halfway Dyer's to Hex, a little tower bit more, on Invoker. Dyer's bottom tower oh, fallen. Dyer's bottom tower is going to fall for no reward. Really. They're going to try to take down the tier 1 top, or, yeah, top lane. And it looks like they're going to, but maybe at the loss of their own tier 2 tower, so not entirely sure. Yeah, Edict level 4, Radiant although as a cast point, it's still as strong as ever in taking Dyer's down towers. This tower will fall so under. fast as it's going to fall almost as fast as the tier 1 on the top lane as Invoker picks up the last hit and Barrett going for the buckler instead of the blink dagger he's just going to say screw it, not getting blink dagger, just going to tank up he's doing quite well but right now he's going for all utility base items and the tier 2 tower might get pushed but in exchange for that going to make the smart decision pressure the tier 3 tower in instead what will Sen do? they're going to have to teleport back like there's going to be a meteor. Oh no, Tidehunter loses all of his HP. He's gonna get fissured. He might die? No, it looks like he is going to live. Leshrac's taking a ton of damage. Leshrac will fall. Batrider goes in immediately. Echo Slam. Buyback coming out, it looks like, from someone. Yeah, Batrider's back up, and I think this is a one-for-one -one engage so far. Oh, Templar Assassin Trap hitting four people. Batrider's just so slow. Oh no, we see Fissure moving into position. Morphling's backing up. Ravage 
Oh, well, he hits the invoker. Super manly, and it looks like there's. That's gonna be it. They have no more HP. Invoker is on the run, but he, oh, it doesn't get the ghost walk off. But it looks like the TA is just gonna clean up, take down the morphling. Will he be able to get away? He has one. Yeah, okay, he's got the waveform, and he's starting to morph, but the Refraction misses, and it looks like Trixie will just leave. No, Refraction on cooldown, no detection, as they kind of know, no, Blink Dagger is going to blink out, as another ward being used up. Templar Assassin escapes for now. Overall, a fairly even exchange, but Tyrant to Ravage only hitting one person really hurt Zen, and now that ultimate's going to be cooling down for the next 150 seconds. It's going to be difficult for them to stop the next push. 100%. Once that... And I think TA, they have two options right now. TA can go for either the Desolator, which I'm pretty sure she will choose. She might go for a BKB, I don't think so. She's pretty close to either one of them. They can wait for the, can wait for the Hexon Invoker, who's at this point about a thousand away, and then try to push. Or they can say, hey, you know what? We're winning, let's try to end now. I think that they should try to farm out a, you know, a little bit, maybe a thousand more gold on their two key heroes, and then try to win. But really... The world is their oyster at this point. They can do whatever they want. Yeah, it looks like they're going to concentrate some of their efforts on top lane. But Invoker, 10k net worth with that hand of Minus is just farming so well. It's pretty ridiculous at this stage in the game. Just checking out the gold per minute, as I forgot what tab that was. Oh, it's you. Over 500 gold per minute for an Invoker. That is quite good. It's quite good to say the least. This is why Midas is actually a favorite of North American Quasic Jordan Invokers right now. You get so many levels and so much farm, and you really do benefit from the attack speed. Uh oh, Fnatic might be caught in the trap as four years maneuvering themselves, wait for him being casted by No Tail, as he's gonna just try to teleport out. Will he get hexed? Oh, he's just gonna hex at the very last instant. And Dura Shaker, can he escape? Dura Shaker's gonna try to drop another defensive fissure, gonna try to teleport out, but he's gonna take the ball as well. Lasso and Shackle, double net hold in place, and Tyrant just picks up a kill. Unfortunate, but they only went in with two. So nice recovery by Sen, and more importantly, their Ravage is cooling down. All their ultimates are cooling down, and they're going to try to get a push going. No, oh, that was a great fight for Sen. That's exactly what they needed. Try to take out, you know, a limited number of Fnatic's heroes. Right now, because they're down, they'll be able to at least force pressure on the other area of the map, which will give them a little bit control over the Roshan area again, which is so important for them right now, even though we haven't really talked about it. Radiance yeah, the key hero to watch out in this fight is going to be the Tide Hunter. Looks like this tower is just going to be given up for free as it was below half HP from that earlier engagement. And Fnatic looks like they're just going to farm up. Uh, probably waiting for that Invoker Hex. Yeah, I think that's what, what they're going to Radiance top tower. And Templar fallen. Assassin is going for BKB, so just choosing to go for that safer route. Yep, the pause is coming out as Invoker is going to have his Hex going. Meanwhile, Ping's going out as we have a little bit of a pause. Lag is the call by the Batrider. As we can just take a look at the graphs, 5,000 in favor of the Radiant for a gold graph. Not too big of a difference, but more importantly, the experience graph is finally taking a dip towards the Sen squad, slowly but surely. And this is what they need to get back in the game, but what is extremely worrying is the lack of farm on Morphling. A Morphling is a hero who can always catch up. The, the issue is, though, will it take him too long to catch up? Will the Invoker and the Templar Assassin be too strong before he can get those items up, you know? That's that's my major concern right now for him. Yep, and looks like JK finally finishes up the Hex. Well, they engage five heroes again grouped up, and no, no tail is going to be initiated on. He's going to force staff his way out of the Venice Gale. Splurred catching two heroes, nicely done, as Telekmes is going to hold up the Tide Hunter in place. Another Fissure catching four heroes, nicely done, as Templar Assassin's going to blink it. Immediately, all the refraction charges are drained. Trixie might just die super fast. It's gonna pop in the blink of an eye, but Invoker's coming in with the meteor catching so many heroes. Ravage being popped again. Nicely done by Rubik, and now Morphic's on the tree. As this is a complete victory for Fnatic. Five heroes die. Only Templar Assassin, the major hero, as JK is just dominating at this stage in the game. With the Hex coming in from the rear, all the ultra trees on Templar Assassin, and Invoker just cleaned it up happily. The hero of that fight for me was Earthshaker again. He's had some really good fissures in the past. But this time, I think the big one. So, this is teamwork. If, if you remember what happened, he fissured, he walks, he looks like he's going to go in and echo five people, but then he backed out, and I thought, what is he doing? Why is he doing this? Well, Invoker wasn't quite there, so he waited for Invoker to get there. And once Invoker was there, he then went in and fissured. And once the fissure was there, or, excuse me, echoed, and the stun off of that allowed them to hit the meteor, which killed basically everybody. 
that was what dealt all the damage in that team fight. It was the meteor, and it was because ES made a good decision. Yeah, and what really hurt them was actually just casting so many of their ultimates onto the Templar Assassin. Yeah, Templar Assassin is really strong here. You can definitely win a team fight. But when you have Barrow to Flaming Lasso and Venice Scale, his refraction will die super fast without a BKB. So I guess using all those ultimates just for a Templar Assassin without BKB was not the best decision, but they tried to do whatever they could to get the kills, and they got a couple kills, but still, definitely not worth the price, as we have a disconnect by the Batrider. He is lagging out, he has a Hood of Defiance and a Mechanism, but still, not, no Blink Dagger, and I guess it's not really necessary when you're running around as 5. Oh, I wouldn't say so at all. However, did you notice how the Rubik stole the Ravage? Did Tidehunter not hide it, or was he CC'd, or how did, how exactly did that work? Because I, di I didn't catch that, to be honest. I think Tidehunter just had a brain lapse for a second, because he cast the Ravage, and then Rubik casted it like four or five seconds after it, so it was a bit odd. But uh, a little bit of a mistake by a Tidehunter, I'm not too sure at this point. Yeah, uh, it looks like Batrider's PC crashed, so we might be a minute or two, but... The important thing for Fnatic is, aside from, you know, the stuff we've talked about before, the Templar Assassin, the Invoker, Rubik has four staff and Ravage for the next team fight, assuming he doesn't die, and he won't. Yeah, as that Ravage is going to be cooling down for another 100 seconds. But meanwhile, the Tide Hunter Ravage is cooling down for 90 seconds, so yeah, an 8 second difference between the first Ravage and the second one, not really too common, but still enough to get Fnatic the clear advantage in this game. And Voker is just becoming such a big problem. He's going to probably outcarry the Morphling, and Morphling, still nothing. He's going to try to go for that Mantis style, but still decently amount far away. As Mantis style recipe does cost 900 gold at this point, so he's still pretty far. Yeah, he's he's extremely far off. Oh, yes, he's, he's going to have the Blink Dagger as well. Yeah. It's going to be an issue. Yep, so we're just going to wait on this pause as... We'll see if Fnatic just decides to end it. One thing that's not going for them is the last track is only level 8. So that's a bit unfortunate for them, as he is extremely underleveled. As... Yeah, he's he's the one who's dying first in every single one, or every single team fight. But... Yeah, he's actually the lowest level in the game. Very unfortunate. But he's still doing work. He's pushing down towers. He's still making a very, very significant impact. Yeah, it's it's one thing about last track is he's good in, in every single role. You can have him as a farmer, you can have him mid. And although those two also have kind of been phased out, he's still capable of it. However, when you're playing him as a hard support, I think he really isn't as good as a hard support in this patch. I think he needs a little bit of farmer and a little bit of levels, simply because the cast point on Edict is going to make it hard for him to be as effective early without getting you know fast boots or fast phase boots or mana boots, whatever. Point is, I think he needs a little bit more. And I think we're seeing him being punished for it, to be honest. Uh, the, the patch change, I think, is kind of working against Fnatic in this match. Yeah, but they still overall made solid counter picks. I'm still a little bit puzzled putting the Morphling up against Templar Assassin in the middle lane, and I think that might come back to haunt the Morphling a bit. But we'll see if Fnatic makes them pay. As this, keep in mind, this is only 24 minutes in the game, and we're seeing so much action: 42 kills in 24 minutes. This is the type of aggression as so much gold being uh, gotten in these kills at, because of the gold patch. It's pretty nice to see. Yeah, I mean. I, I am going to be biased towards a more aggressive style of play, just because I think it's more fun to watch, and even more importantly, it's more fun to play. Like It's fun to run around killing people, so when you see people just running around killing stuff in competitive games, to me, that's the best kind of Dota. <laughs> M5 Dota, the best Dota. Absolutely. Oh, or the former not M5. not M5 anymore, which yeah, is the retry. a huge upset, yeah. <laughs> well, M5 Dota is actually pretty good now. Really, really yeah. strong, making a good impact in the Star Ladder tournament. Uh, oh, so you're implying that they weren't good before? Yeah, they. Well, <laughs> no, they were uh, in the international I, too. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. But it, it looks like Batrider is going to be back. At least Tidehunter is saying that. So. Yep. Anyway, so take um, this time to thank all the sponsors, Fragbite and Thor. This is the Fragbite Thor Open. So shouts to Fragbite for putting on this tournament. This is the qualifiers that we run every eight weeks. And the finals will be cast tomorrow, best of three, as this open tournament has so many teams. So we'll be with you for a decent amount of time today. And then we'll have the finals of this particular qualifier tomorrow. And then this will be going on for the next eight weeks eight weeks to qualify for the finals in Stockholm, Sweden. So shout out to Fragabyte for putting on this open tournament. 
absolutely. It's, it's a good thing that they're doing. So check them out. I, I'm always going to say this, the sponsors of esports are kind of the thing that drives the whole scene. So. Yep. As uh, we're just waiting on the pause, you were going to say something before? Oh, I was going to say, oh, that's cute. They're drawing hearts on the map. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I think that the way that the Dyer can get back in this... Dyer's best option right now is, I think, to continue five-man ganking. I don't think they can win it by farming. I think that they have to try to five-man Dota, which they have been doing, and it hasn't been, work hasn't been working that well, but if they can get some good picks off, maybe get a Roshan off with some good picks. That's how they'll come back. And to be honest, I think they need the dagger on, on Batrider. I don't think they can do it without it. Yeah, right now what's eliminating them is the long cooldowns of the ultimates on Tidehunter and Venno. Without a Batrider to blink dagger, you really sort of have to wait for that because you don't really have a reliable form of initiation. So you just sort of have to go into these giant clumps and hopefully get one hero picked off. But if you commit without the Batrider blink dagger to immediately get him out of there or get in and immediately pick off a hero, they're going to be fighting huge team fights. Um, with the Tidehunter Ravage cooldown being so long, it's going to become more and more difficult. Absolutely, and that's something that I would say that the Radiant has. Oh, and he's back. I was going to say the Radiant has a lot of good small engage power with the Shaker Fissure and Leshrac and Invoker TA Rubik, but I don't think that the Dyer is quite as good as at those you know frequent engages, which is what this game is. This game has been non-stop engages, so... Yeah, um... I, I think I agree with you, but I'd rather they just go in with four and just have the Morphling farm up, because otherwise he's really just going to become more and more useless as Lakin approaches. So maybe go in with four and try to get the oh. Blink Dagger up on Batrider and have Morphling just farm up. Oh, yeah, I, I meant to say that absolutely. You send the Replicate with them while the Morphling farms. This is how you do it. Or at least yeah. how I would do it, so. <laughs> if something important comes up, he can be there, otherwise he will be farming. Yep, as it looks like they're probably just going to wait for, or Fnatic's probably going to wait for the BKB to finish on Templar Assassin, and maybe for the Earthshaker ultimate to cool down, but then I think you just try to end it at this point. They have the Blink Dire on the Earthshaker, they have solid initiation, and some warding going up by the Dire, but right now they are just caught so far into their enemy base, they're really, really frightened to venture out very far. No, oh, absolutely, and it looks like Templar Assassin's going to finish up her BKB, and I think once that's done, and once Shaker is ready to fight, I think they'll try to end it. I really do. I can't I can't see what else they'd be waiting for. Yeah, I guess if they wanted to keep farming, they'd get uh, Invoker Agonist. But still, he's as powerful as he'll ever be at this point. I mean, he'll get more powerful, but with the, such a really, really dominating kill streak, he's really, really strong at this point. So Earthshaker still about 35 seconds away from his ultimate. But right now, we do see Fnatic starting to move her in. Unfortunate Fissure Block as the Triple E is going to escape for now, as they might have been able to pick him off, but the Fissure Block was on the wrong side. Yeah. It's nice to see Yes, you know? We haven't really seen Earthshaker being played for a long time. And, you know, he's, he's really been a staple of Dota for years and years and years. So he's always kind of in the scene, kind of out of it, sometimes mainstream, sometimes not. But either way, I, I really do love to see him played. Yep, another pause as uh looks like teams are having a little bit of issues at this point. But Templar Assassin does have the BKB now and 300 gold as Earthshaker only 10 seconds away from his ultimate as the go, the resume is called once again. Uh, maybe they're going to wait for Rurik Blink Dire as well. He's only 300 away. They could. They very well could. And you know what? He could even sell his bottle if they want to push right now. He could go sell his bottle and we'll have it, so... Yeah, meanwhile, Barrider picked up the headdress, so he's going for the mechanism. Does he have it on the courier? Uh, he has a pipe of insight recipe, so does anybody... Oh, Barrider has the... Yeah, he already, he already has the mechanism. Yeah, he already has the mechanism. So he's going to have the pipe, so that's going to be cool, but still, uh, I don't know if it'll make too big a difference. It'll stop so much of Leshrac and Earthshaker damage. It's actually pretty significant. It will help a lot. It will really, really help them against the armor penetration coming out from the Templar Assassin, I think. But... Either way, I'm not entirely certain I like this build from Batrider. I feel like if they wanted someone who did this role who burns refraction, I think that Dirge would have been just an all-around better choice. Uh oh, Morphing's gonna get hexed. He's gonna die. He still has a replicate up. Did Earthshaker use No, just cast the Enchant I'm a little bit deceptive uh, with this animation. Still not used to it in Dota 2. Uh, but still, easy kill on the Morphling. He's gonna be dead for the next 40 seconds or so. 
He does have buyback money, but you probably does not want to burn it. But still, another tier tower is going to fall. Fnatic all maneuvering themselves into position. And the Blink Dagger is going to be flying up for Rubik very, very soon. He does have the Blink Dagger, so now they have so many forms of initiation, it's not even funny. Yeah, and we got Aghanims on Invoker, so they could try to end it right now. The safer option is to go for Roshan. Uh-oh, Smoke is coming in. Tide blinks in. Tide ravages and hits everybody. Rubik counter ravages. Great play. You see Hani is killing everybody with the Meteor. He's dealing so much damage. Venomancer will fall. Batrider falls. Morphling is still dead. Tidehunter lifts into the air. Kraken still dispels it, but it's not even enough. And finally, Ross takes the fall for what's just an absolutely brutal team fight that ended in about five seconds. Yeah, so many strong plays by Fnatic. Blink and Ravage, Blink and Echo Slam. So much damage being dealt. Also by the Lechak, did survive that, survive that whole fight. And Fnatic is just looking really, really strong at this point. Uh, they're going to be able to pick off this tier 3 tower and probably the Rex as Templar Assassin's going to Blink and scare Morphling away. He cannot even defend this Rex and they Dyer's might even go for the middle Rex as well. Without the Tidehunter ultimate, it's going to be pretty difficult, but probably just going to play it safe as they're going to pick off this top Rex with ease and Fnatic just looking overpowering in this game. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm sure you remember that when, at, at the beginning of the game, I said, oh wow, I'm really surprised that Fnatic is moving around like this. They look like an inexperienced team. Not anymore. That coordination in the last team fight was just absolutely, it was pitch perfect. Everything was done at exactly the right place, exactly the right time. It was, it was some very high level teamwork going on. So it was really good to watch. I liked it. Yeah, Urshaker has another 2,000 gold in the bank, so he'll probably maybe get Force Staff or Ghost Scepter or anything he wants at this point, but Tornado is going to come on. Looks like Time just going to blink out. Barrow taking a bunch of damage, pops the pipe, but he is trapped between a Fissure and a Templar Assassin. Never position one being another Echo Slam being dropped as the cooldown. Did he even use it in the last fight? I guess not. As Venomancer is going to probably take the fall. Trixie going to go in. Triple E, a couple more hits. Cold Snap being casted. Refraction being casted as well. Will Triple E escape? Venomancer is going to definitely take the fall. No, they're just going to ignore him for now. As now Fnatic is just sort of playing the other team. Trixie is going to run away. And Venomancer, I guess he escaped. Oh, there he is. He's going to die. No, Trixie unable to pick off any targets as looks like he might find himself in a bit of trouble. Venomancer is finally going to take the fall and Boker's still here to clean up. Will they pick off the Morphling once again? Cold Snap and Hex doing so much damage. They're going to kill the Morphling once again. But Templar Assassin and Boker might fall shortly after. Fnatic might have overcommitted, but still, they are so far ahead. It's not even funny. Tornado did use. Will he be able to escape? Can he escape? Meteor being casted as well, caught in a choke point. But Triple E and Ivy's take a bunch of damage, but they are forced to back off as Fnatic. Uh, a little bit over aggressive. They're going to buy back. They want to get the rush out of this. Oh, Sunstrike. Were you watching that? No. I was. I knew he was going to do it. That was nice. That is some high skill invoker play. Where'd he die? Dyer's top oh, it was so close to the Fallon. So close. I was I was impressed with that. This is Hani, I believe, right? This is Hani, JK. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, so I was impressed with this broker play right there. The, the way he cut into the trees, so basically he runs away, he cuts himself into the trees. He doesn't even bother wasting the, the ghost focus. He checks their items, he sees that they have counter in this, so... And basically, if you can get yourself in a choke point, oh no, Ross is just going to go down immediately. The oh. Ghost Hunter, though, I lied, it saves him. Uh, Morphling is going to try to fight, but it doesn't even matter if fractions up. Yep, and Earthshaker, does he have the ultimate? He'll have it in 10 seconds. And Fnatic going to try to get themselves. Invoker is just doing so much work. Really nicely done by Hani. As looks like they're going to try to pick off the Aegis and then go for the kill. No, they're just baiting it out. Yeah, and I think the way that this start probably is with if we see Invoker's rotation right now. Oh, well, never mind, he changed it. I lied. <laughs> As Invoker is going to go back into the Roshan, they're just keeping San or whatever uh, locked in their base. Saying San, I'm not really too sure at this point. Our bad. Yeah, <laughs> really, really bad by us. But uh, we we're a little bit rushed we'll getting into this game. As Trixie picks up the Aegis. And now Fnatic gonna try to seal the deal. All five heroes are grouped up once again. Firefly being cast and No Tail is gonna be locked in place without Echo Slam. They lose a bunch of their damage. Echo Slam is used on three heroes at the very least. Meteor coming in. Looks like No Tail is gonna take the fall. Ooh, did Rubik steal the Ravage? He did steal the Ravage. And Ravage is being used once again. 
looks like Earthshaker buys back. Well, Ivy's escape goes up and once again saving his life, but Triple will take the fall. Rubik takes the fall as well. Bunch of buybacks by the Radiant Squad as they want to end this right now. But nice recovery by Sen. But yeah, unfortunately, it was, it's going to be a little too little too late. It was. Well, it would have been a good fight, except did you see No Tail's Fissure there? That's some Zippo stuff there. He divided their team exactly in half and got half of them trapped on the high ground and half on the low ground. It was just like, wow. Then he blocked the rest of it off with his body. I don't know. I thought it, I thought it was good. It, it was pretty, it was pretty hot. Dyer's structures are fortified. <laughs> Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Oh man, this is a... Uh... This is going to be the end for Sen, as Middle Racks are going to take the fall. One more team fight, and probably Sen will call GG. Will Trixie be able to escape? Firefly coming in once again, but again, another Fissure being blocked off. Barra is going to be home place. Rubik doing so much damage. Meteor coming in from the sky, raining down destruction onto the Batrider, even though he's fire base here. Trixie going to take a bunch of damage, has the BKB. Deafening Blast Hani is just doing everything right in this game. I think been casting MP. He might finally take the fall. Will Hani die? Hani, no! Oh, he's gonna live. <laughs> he lived because he switched to Quas. Oh, man. Throw invoking right there. Trixie loses the Aegis. Sunstrike gonna fly in. Unfortunately, it does miss the Shadow Shaman. Trixie gonna try to man up, soul everybody down like a boss. Earthshaker is just gonna spoil Trixie's party for now as Trixie found himself in a little bit of trouble. And now Fnatic is just having so much fun at this point, just cleaning up. And they're gonna probably get themselves into the next round of the frag a bit. Yeah, that's something like and at, at the back half of this game, I really it's been a showcase of the, the individual skill of all of these players. Haste. We saw the great play from ES. We've seen some obviously great play from Invoker, who is going to go on Morph when he's just going to drop the MP. He's going to hex him out. Looks like he will go down. Yes, he does. But in the meantime, Rubik is going to take the fall for it. Westrack gets away because of a canceling from it. Looks like the Rasta. Rasta's running away. Titan is going to go down to Deso. And Invoker is running for his life on 40 HP. And it looks like Batrider's going to go down. Who is left? Rasta's left, Venom's left, but that's it. Yeah, solo HP on Fnatic, but that's not going to save him from the Templar Assassin. Oh, Ghost Scepter not being casted quickly enough. You Trixie one on shot to Shadow Shot. Steps. Really unfortunate for him. Winter might be in trouble as it. well, as GG well played is called by Chubby and Cub. As Fnatic takes a convincingly, had a little bit of a rough start in the very opening minute, but unfortunately, oh, they could not hold oh, on. Or they just. Held on and they managed out lane and ultimately helped fight the Sand Squad. Sand played overall decently, but I think they were just overwhelmed. It's really hard when you're when you're a new team, or at least a team that isn't that well known, playing against a team with reputation like these players have. It, it's it's hard to do to begin with, and then you have that whole mental aspect of like, oh my god, these guys are so good going into it. So you know what? I think Sand put up a good fight and honestly I think they played well, so Props to them. Yeah, interesting picks. Uh, Barrett actually did very well for himself, but unfortunately, uh, not enough backup as Monkey's gonna take the ball once again. Tyranter is gonna die shortly after. Will there be a blanket to pursue? Uh, Templar Assassin is gonna get BKB Lasso to get a hold of in place, but it's not gonna be enough. Echo Slam being casted on three or four once again. Templar Assassin, oh, the Ravage is gonna fly in, as this is all just the formalities at this point. The uh, Fortress is going to take the fall finally for the Dyer's Ancient as it is known now. As they're still defending. Yeah, that's. You don't see that too often in GG, and then people people keep defending, but. Eh, they got hard. They got hard. Uh, they, they. Now, they, they know it's over. It's just, you know. I don't know. It's just a habit, I guess, to prolong games. I'll admit it. I'll do it, and then I'll say, oh, nope, we GG. Gotta leave the game, but. It's. It was a good game. Yeah, nicely done by both Dyer's teams. Uh, Fnatic just looked really attack. strong in this game. And people have been making light of Fnatic, uh, saying, are they invited to every tournament? But they are showing that with proper coordination, Dyer's with the power of picks, they are just really, really attack. disciplined and can Dyer's take Dyer's team fights like no other. So thank you for watching this opening game. My co cast was Shrek. Find me on YouTube at where can they find you? It's Shred Kid Dota, is my channel. You yep. can also go to shred underscore kid at my stream on Twitch TV, so that's it.
Yep, so this has been the Fragabyte door open. This is the first round, so we'll be back very, very shortly for more games. So thank you all for watching, and see you soon.